Habari zenu and welcome back to my channel my name is Wabuwa Mwege and I'm back with another video So today I'll be showing you how to make a shaggy rug a handmade shaggy rug or a bed rug a seat rug something like of this Yes and I will give you the required items where I purchased mine and if I can remember the prices to each item so I hope you enjoy and stick around. So for us to be able to make our mats, we shall require a number of items. And the first thing on the list is a tapestry or a rug mesh, a mat mesh, whatever you feel like calling it. And I acquired these along Viashara Street in Nairobi at a shop called Freeman's and those guys are really nice because they will also even help you make decisions on the size of uh, the, the, the mesh you want because if you are confused as me you shall go there and you shall waste uh, 30 minutes trying to uh, decide what uh, size you are going to buy and I bought this other size uh, at wool shop in a cool room so this is about two meters and i acquired it at a price of a thousand shillings and uh, this one i can't remember the price to this one but uh nairobi is way cheaper way much cheaper than nakuru but the prices do not vary so much so this is the first thing on the list and some people use uh sacks bunias so if you can't acquire this you can use a sack so that is the first thing on the list. This thing is uh, way much better because it has some shimo, it has some, some two holes where you'll just like crochet uh, every single hole in this thing and after you're done with that, you will be able to come up with something like this. Yes. So the second item on our list is yarn uzi. So you can find this in supermarkets or in shops that sell clothes. I bought mine at around 80 shillings. 80, they go to uh, they vary from 80 to 100 shillings at there. So you can buy your preferred color because there are so many colors you can play along with. And if you have a themed house and you have that like that carpet that, that does not fit, you can add with your preferred colors. So for this one, I'm going to be making a red and black uh, combination. So you go for your colors. Uh, they are not that expensive. But for this uh, size, I use about 10 to 12 yards. So yes. Third thing in our list is a crochet or a crochet. So this one I bought at 50 shillings uh, along River Road. And this one I acquired it at around 70 shillings in a supermarket around home. So I, I don't think we have passed 100 shillings. So I have to because I normally teach people how to do shaggy rugs for free. And after this video, the lessons are over. Okay? So yes, that's the third thing on our list. So the fourth thing on our list is scissors. So go for a good pair of scissors that uh, can you can last you a long time because this you'll be using uh, to cut your yarn. So don't go around cutting braids with your scissors; they will go blunt or some papers. So acquire a good pair of scissors that will last you for a longer time, a longer period, and that will cut your yarn smoothly. So I think this I bought at I think one twenty shillings, but. Scissors are all over, so acquire yours at your preferred price. So the first thing is a sim card, a sim plate. So this is what I use to cut my yarn with. So you can go for various uh, for various uh, items because uh, at along Beshara Street and along River Road, they sell the two cards for cutting uh, your yarn. But I. I normally love my simplet because when I lose this one, I'm going to get another one easily and I've become accustomed to using this one so I don't have like to vary the sizes of my yarn. I love the sizes of my yarn through the plate. You can use a ruler if you want shorter yarns. You can use that uh, Colgate container uh, according to what you feel like but I use a simplet. 
and the other thing is this needle i don't know how it's called in english but and i acquired this at 50 shillings in a hardware so you can ask for sindano yakushona magunia and they'll give you this sindano and the purpose of this sindano is hemming around your mat your mesh to avoid it tearing up when you're done crocheting your rug the other thing you need is a marker here my pie chart this one uh, you require to draw your design your preferred design so if you want uh, to draw a flower, to draw anything you feel like, I would advise you go to go for a permanent marker because you will come into contact with your already drawn design on the tapestry maybe when hemming and if the marker is not permanent enough or like it doesn't, it, it is not dry enough, it might come off and confuse you when uh, crocheting your rug. So go for a permanent marker so that even when you're done designing, and you're hemming around it doesn't mess up your design so i think those are the things i use when making my rugs making the rugs is pretty easy so i'm going to show you the process so that you can earn some small cash at home at the comfort of your sofa so stick around and don't press that button So as promised guys, I'm going to show you how we do the hemming of the mat and I'm going to use this mat that I'm making. So I have done uh, about three quarters of the hemming and remained a small section for me to teach you how it is done. For the hemming yarn, I use the color that is going to be most dominant on the mat. And for this case, I'll be using the black and red yarn whereby the black will be so minimal to just be on these letters. So uh, the red will be in the maximum and that is why I chose the red hem so that my mat doesn't look so busy at the end and at the back. So for the process of hemming we shall require that needle I told you about, this one, and some yarn and a pair of some scissors. So uh, the first thing we shall do is uh, insert our yarn like we normally do when sewing like so and shall like uh, pull until you have uh, the required thread size you have so if you're starting for the very first time it is recommended that you don't use a uh, very long threads because they might confuse you in the hemming so after you have cut your required thread size you shall tie a knot just as you do when you're sewing something like so so this is what we have so the next thing we shall do is uh, come uh, at any point of our mat provided it's not at the corner so I'm just going to start uh, where I left out and we are going to insert our needle from the top like so this is the top so we are going to insert our needle at this hole From the top so this will ensure that uh, when we are he uh, when we are hemming this part remains at the top and it will be uh, it won't be visible it will be invisible because when we crochet our threads will be at the top and at the back it won't seem like this anything that is missing you get to see you see so our back will look like this and our front will be filled with so much threads because when crocheting our threads, the threads will, be, will remain at the top and the back will be clear. So that is why we uh, put the knot on the top. So the next thing we shall do is hem. So the hemming process is really easy. Uh, this is our needle which has remained at the back. So we shall... Let me show you. So... We shall come and do this. Don't know whether you can see it. Okay, and we shall insert our needle from. See the thread is at the back. We shall come and insert our needle. Like so, hope you see. Like so and insert our needle and form a cute hem. 
so and if uh, there are any spaces that remain ensure that you go back you can insert your needle in a single hole twice ensure that you can go back uh, to ensure that your hems are as clean as possible and no space is left so yes let's do this remember I told you if you're starting out for the very first time kindly don't use a longer thread they might confuse you they might uh, be more bulkier and more tiresome so yes guys now we have three holes remaining i want to show you how you hem at the corners we have three holes remaining one two and three so the next thing you do is you will overturn to your next uh size this this other side and align it to the to the line that is you will align it like so and make a small diamond like so and leave this a uh, small diamond here like so so you will come and insert your needle from the top at the hole that was last inserted your thread uh, we will insert it here you get here like so so we'll have something like this so the next thing we will do is we will start hemming it backwards we'll start hemming it backwards this is where we reached uh, at the end so when you overturned we came to this other side that we haven't hemmed so uh, we will start hemming it backwards whereby we shall go back to these ones to these previous ones and ensure that this corner is well secured let me show you how we will do that so we shall go back to the previous okay let me show you so this is we shall go back to this uh this line so yes like so and insert your needle here oh this is really tough to explain you will insert your needle here to form something like this you get it's like you're forming a line so we'll do the same for our next one and then we shall go back to this other line we left behind so let's do this so and hurrah we are done with our corner ensure that uh there is no space that is left behind ensure that it is as tight as possible because we don't want uh, the hems to be loose we don't want uh, the tapestry to come peeping it will make your mat look a uh, very shaggy a uh, very untidy so we shall go back to our hemming process So remember it's lift and lay it down there and insert your needle on that next hole lift lay it down there lift you lay it down there you can use your fingers and insert on the next uh, hole on your mesh so you form something like this it's really easy so guys after you uh, you've reached the end we shall cut our thread using our scissors like so and then we shall uh, use our crochet to insert uh, because this thread is a little bit too big we shall use our crochet to insert it in the next uh, hole So like so and then uh, after it's 
you have to ensure at the end of the day your thread remains at the back when you're done so that we shall uh, use our crochet again to pull uh, to we shall insert in you see the next the, the hole that you've done last we shall use the previous hole to pull it back up like so don't worry I'll show you how to do the crocheting like so and then we shall tie our knot uh, on these two threads like so So guys, like I said, you can repeat a whole uh, twice. So this is how I was, uh, this is what I was talking about. So I'm going to lay it on top here and repeat in the same, in the previous hole. So like so. So we are, are done with hemming our mat, our mesh, it's not yet a mat, so it's a mesh and this is how it turns out after we're done hemming. So for me hemming is what consumes most of my time and when I'm done hemming I know that everything else is easy, it's quick and simple. So I'm going to show you the next stage which is cutting our yarn to ensure that uh, we have uh, equal sizes of yarn so I love to cut uh, my yarn first before uh, crocheting it so that I don't finish uh, uh, one single yarn and then I'm going back to cutting yarn so what I do is purchase a lot of yarn I purchase uh, several yarns maybe a packet or two and then cut them and then at the end, at the end of cutting that is when I start crocheting my yarn so I will come here at the corner, at the corner of my plate. It's, it's becoming difficult to show you guys that way. I don't know, you can see it that way. And then we'll just roll it around the same plate until the plate is full. We started uh, with the yarn on this top corner, like so. We started with the yarn here. So at the, when we are finishing, the yarn will be behind here. So we'll take a, a pair of scissors and cut it. 
and we will have something like this so at the, this is the end it's at the back this is the front uh, the starting is at the front you get so we'll sh then come uh, to the very top of the simplet here This is why I told you that you need a very sharp pair of scissors. If you want shorter yarn, you can uh, go back to cutting the yarn at the bottom of the plate too. But I want this larger yarn. So this is how my yarn, the size of my yarn will look like. They will be long enough so that when I crochet them into two, they will be around this size. So this way ensures that uh, my yarn is equal that I don't have to go back then to the mat and equalizing them. So you can use whatever it is that you want or is available to you and in accordance to the size you want for your yarn. So the next process is the crocheting process. So when crocheting, I, would, I love to start with the minimal colors. So this is just two letters and some shape around here to separate the letters. So I will use the black color and then the red when you're doing uh your your mat uh, avoid crocheting avoid crocheting your tapestry going in the horizontal or vertical vertical is down here Cindy. so i will advise you to go uh, the vertical way whereby this there's so much space here at the vertical way compared to uh, the horizontal way whereby it is way much squeezed I don't know whether you get what I'm saying so this is uh, the horizontal I think whereby they are thicker thicker the tapestry is thicker on this side and like this other side whereby the tapestry is thinner it has thinner uh, thinner sides where you can crochet your tapestry so I'm going to go straight and show you uh, how crocheting is done. So let's get to the process. So the first thing is you will hook in your crochet into, you see, like that. You hook in your crochet into this, uh, this hole and then you pick up one single strand of thread and fold it into two equal parts and hook it in your hook. Uh, for the first timers you can uh, like sorry for the first timers you can close it manually you close this uh, this uh, this one you close it manually and then you pull you get so if it is so difficult for you you can insert these into this loop you have created sorry you can insert the thread into the loop you have created and pull so. or you can just a uh, hook fold your strand into two well as you pull it closes itself but you can close it manually you pull and then you lock it again and ensure it passes through the loop you have created and pull and fasten So this is how it will look at the back. This is how the back will look like. So I'm going to do it more fast. And I will fill each and every hole on this tapestry to ensure that my mat has a fuller look. This is a small cup portion that I have crocheted. This is how it looks like. So it gets more beautiful and more uh, fluffier as you go on crocheting your, your thread. And this is how it looks at the back. So now I hope you understand why I use the most dominant uh, yarn when hemming because it will sink in with uh, the thread when you crochet. So this is how it looks like. 
it's beautiful especially when you're done with it it looks so good especially on bright colors it looks so good so I'll keep on showing you the progress uh, as I keep uh, crocheting uh, maybe not the whole mat or maybe the whole mat depends on uh, the speed of my hand Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to leave out this very important pointer here. So if you don't have the luxury of time or energy to make your own mat, no worries, I gotcha. So you can find me uh, on Instagram at Sankana Carpets and DM me or contact me by the email address I'm going to leave in the description bar below and place your order in accordance to your color, size and design preference. Thank you. You require is a tapestry or a mash mash mash. How are you, ni guys? How are you? I want welcome back to my channel. My name is Waboywa Mugai, and I'm back with another video.